but uh unfortunately mm -hmm. usually heavily frowned upon even if you're just having like a light beer mm. so i'll uh yeah. kind of get right into it so that way i don't yeah. take up too much of your time and is hey, it no so as the american how how do you pronounce your last name is it stan stani stani Stunning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm also from the East Coast, so we kind of like to enunciate our vowels a little differently. So I never know, <laughs> as the no. East Coast person or the Midwest, like how we need to pronounce it. So okay. All right. So I had the pleasure of talking to Michael Stani, vocalist of Dark Tranquility, whose upcoming album Moment comes out November 20th via Century Media Records. Um, you know, I got to say and start off with, uh, Jesus, it's been, and this makes me feel old, and I'm sure it will make you as such too, but a little yeah. over 30 years into the band's career, and you're still putting out really great material that appeases longtime fans, as well as kind of still expanding what is dark tranquility. How is it that, how has the Sonic journey been for you over these, you know, three decades? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. We, um, of course, that is one of the most important things, right? To to still feel challenged by it, still feel have fun doing it, still um, feel that we have something to contribute, something to offer, you know, in the in the world of heavy metal. Um, but also, like it, it has to feel exciting, you know. When uh, when uh, we're writing and uh, recording, um, we gotta feel excited. Like, oh man, you know, eventually we're gonna be on a stage playing these new songs, and if we can't find find that you know then we'll keep looking you know so it's been four years since the last album so <laughs> part of the reason that is that it's not really getting any easier um mm. doing this but um but it would be weird if we started just putting out stuff just so that we have something to do you know we must have must have learned something throughout these 30 years you know so <laughs> if, if the album started to decline then we'd be doing something wrong so of course this is a learning thing you know like every album should be better than the last otherwise what's the point right you know it, it's interesting because i feel like a lot of times you see bands especially or musicians as their career goes and you kind of start wondering if that's really how they feel or if it's just a, like no. you know we have the hits and we because i mean that's the uh, other hard thing is you know the the touring industry is how a lot of musicians make their money sure. and if you are 30 years into a career and you're playing two hours and 18 songs are already decided because they're the hits quote unquote yeah, yeah how yeah. how do you appease yourself and throw in new songs and not feel kind of bummed out when those are the bathroom break songs or whatever and yeah and how many times ha has that happened like million times when i've been to a concert <laughs> i go like awesome awesome but i want to hear my favorite songs now like yeah hope they play it you know let, let's get this new album out of the way first <laughs> well i Which mean how weird and it shouldn't be like that I, I'm, I like to be the guy that enjoys the new stuff more than the the old stuff you know well how or, is it knowing that you know as you just said you as the fan even experience that where you're like eh, you know i, I just kind of want to hear what i want to hear but yeah adversely you're on the other side of it and knowing that like it would feel like it would be kind of hard because you would almost be like yeah i know i get it i do the same thing <laughs> of course it is like yeah I, and sometimes i'm a total hypocrite when it comes to that <laughs> i go like oh, come play the old stuff and then uh while we're putting together our set list i go like uh two more new songs maybe come on so it's do you it, try it to that. do it right away so at least like you're kind of getting as they always say like the spoonful of sugar after the the proverbial like you know bad medicine <laughs> so it's like get it out of the way the first and then from here on you know we got you we're gonna play the stuff you want to hear i it's a little bit I, but i guess we've been fortunate enough to have people who really have followed us like with each new album and it's not like we have you know that one album that everybody wants to hear every single song from or they only want to hear the old stuff um we noticed like and it, this really is like the best critique we can get that people actually want to hear the new stuff mm. a lot you know so normally we start a tour right on the like the day of release of the album we were supposed to do this this year of course um and then we try out the songs you know like we play maybe six or seven uh, new songs and um, the ones that fit that the one that the ones that feel good we keep and we can kind of get away with playing a lot of new songs and i think that's a testament to, to the fact that it's still working you know something that's kind of interesting about this record is it's the first uh with chris and johan on it yeah. and obviously you guys have had some different band members kind of coming in going over the the tenure of the history of the band but yep. 
how did you find having those two kind of bring in new blood into the band? And, you know, kind of the follow up question is, do you feel that having new members kind of throughout the career is actually what has led you to maintain a three decades long career at this point? Finding like, yeah, there was a time where we were frustrated and uh, it felt weird that we didn't know uh, where to go like with, with met, met new members. And then we talked to Chris, he was living in New York at the time. Uh, and we we're like, hey, I haven't seen you in a in forever. You know, we had we toured a lot with Arch Enemy back in the day, but we hadn't seen him. And we asked him, like, do you want to join us for at least a couple of festivals, you know, in Europe? And he was like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do that. <laughs> and then Nicholas, when he decided, like, yeah, I don't want to tour anymore, um, then he suggested Johan um, because he worked on covers for his some of his uh, albums. And and then just and we started rehearsing. And everything just felt right immediately. You know, we come from the same kind of musical background. Uh, we're about the same age. Um, we have a lot of like similar experiences in music. So it, after a couple of weeks on tour, we were like, this is how it feels like this is the way it's always been. You know, it felt right. so familiar yet new. Um, so the fit is perfect you know it, it couldn't have uh, asked for better cooler people and better guitar players so um so i don't know like we pretty much a stable lineup for more than 20 years so I, I don't know if if changing members is the key but it certainly helps at least for enthusiasm and kind of like feeling that kind of new vibe i don't like musically we're kind of conservative and we kind of stick to to what we like and what we know uh, and it's still Anders and Martin that writes most of the material, even though maybe before it was Nicholas and Martin. But um, so it it still retains the same kind of vibe. So so the the challenge is rather to to mm. get in new people to re, uh, really understand what we're doing and kind of hold them back a little bit because they are incredible musicians. You want to shred all over the place, and you go like, no, 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 <laughs> Dark Tranquility now, like easy, easy, easy. <laughs> so, so, but but it's been amazing just um, writing an album together with with people who who known us forever, but are now kind of in it and mm. trying to figure out you know where it, they fit in has been a lot of fun. And fortunately, we had a lot of time to do that. You know, a lot of time in the studio. Um, we could kind of extend and push the release a little bit just because, yeah, we're not going to tour anyway, so we might as well release a little later so we can work on it a bit more. And we did. So, and I, lo I love the fact that we actually could do that. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Like, you know, now we're seeing you know, with some of the various bands, you know, like with Jesse rejoining Killswitch, you know, you heard a lot about how the band had been slogging it out for a decade plus and having Jesse yeah. come in and see everything with a fresh perspective really yeah. reinvigorated the band or even having, mm -hmm. you know, some of the younger b people who are joining some of these older legacy bands and yeah. you're seeing them go like, dude, you know what? I fucking love this song. We need to play this song. And someone's yeah. like, I haven't played that in like 20 years. Like, and it, it reinvigorates even the the love of the old music or the catalog. So it's, you know, it kind of sounds like almost a negative thing of like saying, like, does it, you know, make the band be able to maintain a three decades long career? But it's more of the what it does in a positive sense. And almost like you're saying where it's like, yeah, it, losing anybody is never a, a nice thing or a fun thing. But sometimes the results, you know, of kind of going like, shit, yeah, I forgot about this great song I wrote or we didn't haven't played in 20 years. And maybe Chris is coming in going like, dude, I want to get my hands on this. I want to play this live. And it really yeah. makes you all get excited about material. Maybe that's kind of fallen by the wayside or that you've kind of forgotten about. Oh, it's absolutely true. And, and Johan has known us. He knows all, all the songs better than we do. <laughs> so he would go like, oh, yeah, this sounds like that song. And I was like, what song? Oh, the fourth song on your third album. What? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, but, but also, I think more than anything, like their level of musicianship has really raised the, the, the bar for mm. us as well. So, Anders is playing way better. Uh, the other Anders is playing way better. And me and Martin are really, really pushing it because now that, like, the overall musician, musical level is higher because of Johan and Chris and that's been an amazing thing everybody plays way better than uh, we've ever done so we're like as a live band I think we a lot of things happen when they join you know kind of speaking a little bit more to the album from the artwork perspective you know I feel like you know especially the last excuse me the last two have visually been 
interesting like pieces of art basically for your album artwork yeah. and for this one for moments you know i feel like it's no pun intended uh literally kind of taking someone taking a moment around i don't want to say nothingness because there's obviously a lot going on around them but i also don't want to use the word chaos which is kind of the first word that comes to mind no but no. what does the album artwork mean to you when you see it and how do you feel it encapsulates the music that's contained within well, the idea was at first, like uh, when I started thinking about a, a title for the album, um, moment was kind of like the, this kind of unifying thing where I I wanted the song or the album's album to be about decisions and this and choices um, and how they affect us and where we go, like the different directions we take, the different paths we go down, and and that uh, and how the past um informs you know the choices you make for for whatever future and and what can happen in in that singular moment where kind of everything can change and and go a new direction um so then i started talking to nicholas about like oh how how do you feel about like what what do you want to do this time when like cover and, and he's like i have no idea but okay give me you know send me some lyrics and some ideas um and that was it and then he sent me back some some photos and pictures that you know online pictures just like general ideas and then we started kind of riffing and talking about around that and and the whole idea of like a the singular kind of moment where you kind of see things for what they truly are mm -hmm. in a in a strange and uh, environment you know um was kind of like started and then um then he started like building this really weird alien looking weird world and uh we kind of scaled that back and we changed the color scheme um but it 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 really feels like yeah you're, you're seeing like wow finally I, I i get it you know i understand it or i can see it in a different way because of things that i've learned things that i now understand and finally things become clearer in a way um and some of the songs have, have dealt with that kind of like wanting to kind of find a revelation an epiphany or something like that that really changes the way you uh behave think act all that stuff and um i think you know nicholas i've known since i was six years old <laughs> <laughs> so he he knows you know we have the share the same kind of sensibilities when it comes to stuff but i'm always constantly amazed of, of you know of how he interprets stuff and how he interprets the lyrics and the songs and, and how he kind of makes it all fit somehow you know you know something i was kind of thinking about and oddly enough a friend of mine just literally texted me before i uh, started doing this uh, yeah. from a video from let's say i just turned 36 so 11 years ago uh when a friend of ours was trying to get cast on like some kind of reality show of some sort okay and to see just turn 25 me and hearing what mm -hmm. I'm talking about and the experiences I've gone through is just kind of very interesting and uh, very nostalgic um, last yeah. couple of days for me. And it kind of has made me wonder, what does dark tranquility mean to you now versus what it meant when you started? Like with the original concept of I want to start this band and I want to maybe as the vocalist or whatever, I want to put out this message. What does the <sighs> band mean to you now? Well, in the beginning, it was just kind of breaking free from expectations, you know, and mm -hmm. being free of of what your parents and society kind of expects of you, being like as different as possible from from what your your parents wanted you to be, or what you know your um, the people in school were wanted to do, um, and that became an identity, you know. Uh, kind of an outsider identity that that we really embraced, like being into the most underground weird stuff, like meant that we could just be a little you know club of our own that uh, when we didn't have to care about any uh, anyone else, just mm. us. And that kind of that small clique of friends kind of grew into like a yeah scene here in Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. um, so now, and, and of course, like this happened when I was 16, 17. <laughs> And you know, very impressionable <laughs> at that age, and <laughs> and it and it, it kind of becomes your such a big part of your personality and your life. Um, so the band was it, you know that that's what I do, <laughs> you know I'm that guy in the band, <laughs> you know. So of course that 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 becomes weird thirty years later, you know. It's like, are you just 
is that all you do? But I think for, for me, it's, it's an outlet, you know, it's something that, um, gives me the opportunity to, to write about all the things that I'm angry about, frustrated about, um, and it gives me a, a, an opportunity to talk about it and, but also communicate something, you know, to people in, in, in a, in a way that you cannot do in any other format, you know, being on stage and communicating to a crowd, being like, um, like writing something that you have no idea what it's going to be, but eventually like we all come together to, to, to create something that we can be super proud of. And, uh, is, is that that's what it means to me just like that creative part and that kind of community i think is super important like meeting fans like be at shows festivals the whole kind of metal experience i think um i would be part of that anyway you know <laughs> but being like from a band perspective uh, means that um you can do it even more and and that's what i love so as much as i am a like you know, stay at home dad, more, more or less than, you know, like a family guy, um, metal and music and the band is ever present. Like they, it's always there. It's, it's, and I don't even think what it means. It just, it is mm. just a huge part of me. Like, uh, and I, uh, I wouldn't even imagine like, you know, not doing it, you know? So it's interesting because sometimes you kind of get wrapped up in, especially like I was saying, like at 25, I thought I knew everything and yeah, oh yeah, tell, tell me anything. No. But now here I am, you know, 11 years older, and I'm thinking, mm. you know, about what my life will be like when I'm 40 in a couple of years, and then when I'm 50. Mm. And yeah. you start thinking, and especially now that I've, my wife and I have traveled a lot more and seeing more of the yeah. world, it's kind of informed me of more of things in general and yeah. so the concept when you start usually I, I tend to find when you think about being a band it is kind of a rebellious thing and it's just an outlet yeah. but yeah. then unfor maybe unfortunately as you start going and having a career then you have to start looking into finances and marketing and, and all these things that you yeah. were never a part of, of the dream of being a musician but becomes a mm -hmm. part of it and then subsequently I don't see how it can't not change you because then you start looking at relationships potentially as are people interested in getting to know me or are they using me because of what they think I can offer them? And it just completely, I feel like changes the, per the perspective of how you view people and relationships and so forth. And there's just so much to it that I feel like a 30 year career, obviously it, I feel like it would mean something completely different. Like you were explaining than it did of just, I wanted to play shows and hang out with my friends. Yeah. You, yeah, it, it is weird because sometimes you just like, you just that one guy who goes to work or whatever, but then also like you have the other, you're the guy in the band, you know, so you have like two different roles. And of course, like things happen just because you're in a band here in, in Sweden and, and people know me, you know, but I, I, that's not something I look for or anything, but that, that happens. And he, Sure, it kind of maybe opens the door here and there, but other than that, it's just um, I feel like it's, it's a positive, super cool vibe um, here in town, at least, or at shows and festivals. That um, just means that you know there's a lot of respect for musicians. Everybody is a musician here in town. Like this is kind of crazy, um, all kinds of you know uh, genres. But um, I, yeah, it. it feels weird like maybe part of you know who you are got lost somewhere along the way just because this has taken up so much time and um thought you know mm. over the years um that you kind of for forget what, what maybe what you wanted to do in the first place when you were 20 you know right. this right. just became everything like really really everything you know it was sort of interesting as my co-host and i were talking about this record and kind of formulate like kind of getting some questions because he, he obviously isn't here with us um yeah. but just trying to get some of his questions out and just kind of brainstorming an overall narrative mm. um you know he kind of brought up something interesting in the fact that you know the beginning part of the band's career kind of was more darker and kind of more gothic imagery whereas now it seems like and you kind of hinted at it a little bit uh when talking about the album art where it seems like now you're leaning kind of more towards sort of sci-fi atmospheric stuff within the music and some of your lyrics and so forth, what has kind of led to that shift uh, over the over the time? Or is it something that's just kind of slowly happened? 
I, I guess it slowly happened, and it's just a matter of like finding um, uh, a new perspective on on writing. Um, I can I find myself like writing about the same things over and over, but as I learn things and I you know have new experiences, I can at least change the way I express it, or um, I could talk about it in a different way. Maybe I, you know learn something along the way that, that in, informs <laughs> my uh, wording and the, the way I um, write it. But um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I'd, I'd like to, to at least feel different. I wanted to to feel like a, a fresh take on something that maybe I've, I've written about before, or they are totally new experiences, but I keep using the same um, language. Um, mm. And of course, you know, Especially in the early days, we were um, naive, um, overly ambitious, and and <laughs> <laughs> wrote about things that we have no idea, uh, no concept of knowing anything about. Uh, whereas now you can stick to reality in a in a different way, um, and things matter to you way more because there are stakes now that weren't when you were young. It was just like. Okay, let's do anything. Who cares? <laughs> Go nuts! And now, now things really matter to you. And and then, especially, yeah, be, you know, uh, being older, really realizing that you know what truly is important to you, what truly matters, that kind of thing. Like I, I wanted to write about those things, and I want to write about like under trying to understand what's going on in the world, like how. Why do we do the things that we do? Like, why do we act the way we do? Uh, that kind of thing. What's the underlying kind of th uh, cause for for all this? Um, those things interest me, and sometimes I, I could take like this, yeah, this use perspective, like what's going on globally, universally. You know, it's not science fiction by any means, but it's still kind of like you you take this, um, yeah, different view on 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 who we are and what we're doing here. Um, and it, and it's nice to have that perspective sometimes, sometimes because yeah, we, we are not the most important thing here. You know? It's a concept that a lot of people still seem to struggle to grasp at times. Yep. You know, didn't really have a, couldn't kind of find my way through this question. So forgive the meandering of it, but uh, you know, the other thing my co-host and I were talking about is that, you know, you're kind of known for the the more non-clean singing that you do, yeah. but you have a great voice and you've showcased it pretty much your entire career. Is it still yeah. kind of something, is it still kind of interesting to you that maybe people are su so surprised when you showcase those elements in the music that it's still all these years later, still something that people are like, wow, I didn't, I forget Michael has that great of a, a singing voice. <laughs> Uh, I I don't know. It just I, I've always had like a bit of an issue, not issue with it. In the beginning, it was fun just because no one else was doing it, right? You know, like a, on Sky Dancer, like in '92 when we recorded that, like no one was really doing that, and we thought it was, you know, a challenge to to do it right. We want we wrote some songs that we felt like, oh, this goes way outside of the norm of death metal, but that's the whole point. Um. And and we were just excited to try things out, you know, as a as a young uh, band, you know. Um, and then it kind of became the norm in a lot of like metal. And then I kind of lost interest in it because, like, if everybody's doing it, why should we? <laughs> that right. kind of thing. And and also, I I love the intensity of death metal, thrash, speed metal, you know, black metal. That's what I love, you know. I I love the expression of that, and that's the main thing for us. You know, we have very melodic songs, but you can also e uh, express that in a, in a very powerful way if you're screaming your lungs out to something that, you know, a melody that kind of catches you. Um, and singing, fine. Two hundred million bands do that. You know, <laughs> I think you know what what makes us special from the beginning at least is is the way the music and the intensity kind of matches in a way. I um, so and also I don't want to use it just because it's more accessible. You know, hmm. uh, if we do only the clean choruses and super heavy verses, then that's what uh, all the other bands are doing, and I I don't find that 
that interesting, you know, not for us. <laughs> so, so finding like the, the right balance where we can use it to heighten something, to enhance a song, to to make sure that it's there for the right reasons and not for just, you know, ease of easy listening, whatever. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, we don't. It's not. This music is not radio friendly to begin with, <laughs> and and trying to make it that uh, is a fool's errand. There are more radio friendly bands that that can do that. So. Uh, it, but it, it, of course, it. The way when when we're in the studio, you know, you start like, we, and we start working on a chorus, and and we feel like, oh, this is this is good, like this is melodic, this is nice, you know, um, and it's 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 easy to kind of yeah go let that overtake it, but it shouldn't, you know, it should be there to kind of do it. But I think from this on this album, actually, we decided like let's do some more clean choruses just because the material we had kind of lend itself to it, mm -hmm. and um, so it was it was a lot of fun and a lot of um, experimentation that led into to the writing of these songs. And we wanted to change it up a little bit from Atoma, even though like structurally some of the songs are very similar. But so then we decided to change up the vocal um, uh, parts okay. a little bit and and, um, and the way they are kind of spread out throughout the songs. You know, something, and I, I don't know if you get asked this question a lot, um, but you know, kind of thinking, the thing that was kind of interesting as I was kind of forming questions is I, I felt like I wanted to talk about the history of the band and the legacy of the band because I've not really had the opportunity to talk to so many bands that have been around for as long as you have. So, you know, and like we've kind of been hinting at, um, you know, still putting out music, still expanding who and what you are to the fans. But a part of the story that inevitably always gets brought up whenever either you're talking to other Dark, Dark Tranquility fans or someone's just getting into the band and you're showing it to somebody else is the narrative of, oh, well, you know, the In Flames connection, basically, and how you guys used to write and, you know, always touring and stuff like that way back in the day. And it just makes me wonder if all these years later, if that, and, and I don't know if narrative now is the right word I want to use, but basically just always kind of i don't know if it's a big brother kind of band if it's just friends or if it's whatever but does it get kind of old maybe uh to always seemingly just be linked to this band forever um given the fact that you both have kind of gone and had these long lasting careers because you don't hear of that really anymore like I, I can't sit there i don't hear stories especially and i'm using van halen as the example you don't hear of stories of like oh well when van halen was coming up they used to have this person in the band or they used to play with these guys or whatever not to the same effect of the way that i always do with inflames and you guys it's true i yeah we, we are kind of forever linked just because of our connection early on um how I sang on the first In Flames album and Anders sang on the first Dark Tranquility album. Of, and this is still a cause of, for great uh, confusion <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> um, but, uh, and yeah, we toured together. We are friends and, you know, we grew up together in the same uh, area outside of town. Um, so, of course, it, it's obvious. Um, and, and I'm okay with that. That's fine. It just... It, becomes a little bit old because there's not much to say about it anymore like because we've gone very <laughs> in very different directions yes um so i don't think it it's it's not relevant but of course you know you you do make comparisons like that's how people work you know how how you go like oh, yeah, i like this band better than that band and if there is a link somehow and we there are many between the two of us um then you use that, that as some kind of reference or, you know, this is better than that or uh, the guitar player is better than that band, that kind of stuff. And yeah, so I, I'm okay with it. It doesn't change anything. And, and sometimes, you know, questions about it tend to be um, uninspired. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, what do you think of the last uh, other band's albums? And it's like, well, doesn't matter, but hey, I'm a huge fan. I love it, you know? And then, and it's the same with, of course, at the gates as well, even though, we haven't shared any members together, but we still kind of grew up together. So obviously there's a huge connection there as well. So, and I don't mind talking about, you know, my friends and the awesome bands that are from this town. It's fine. But some, sometimes the, just the direct comparison seem, maybe they were, they meant something in the nineties, but they really right. don't anymore. Yeah. 
it's just like it's just weird. Like I said, I, I've never come across it. And like you said, the cross pollen, cross pollen, pollination, whatever. I'm gonna let that word go. Uh, I know uh, what you mean. <laughs> yeah, but basically because of how incestuous, basically the, yeah, yeah. the members and everything in your earlier careers were, I totally get it. But like I said, it's still weird. Fuck, like twenty plus some odd years later, that people yeah. are. It, it's such a still a talking point, and I just yeah that's the part of it i've never really heard anybody on either side really talk about now it's just like mm. is it kind of like a uh, i kind of wish like that never happened it's kind of a deal like because i'm so over talking about it and just yeah we it's not that, that it's not that bad it, it, it can be and I, I think it's it's more sometimes fans will, will do it especially you know on, on like forum posts and uh you know comments on facebook whatever and it's just yeah then then i it, it seems like it's it's more negative than positive it's not like well I love all these things. It's just like a negative uh, comparison, and, and that's it's kind of boring. But I'm there. <laughs> yeah. One of the last questions I have for you: uh, You kind of were just saying a little bit ago that usually by now you would be touring uh, in support of the new record and playing the new yeah. songs out live. Given <laughs> the global pandemic that we're basically in, uh, that's affected <laughs> everybody and, and especially the touring industry. Yeah. What are your plans uh, to celebrate this release? We are we're gonna like do a a release show like on the day of release or the day after something like that and just you know play the entire album and stream it and make sure um, everybody can see what we had planned for <laughs> for a tour and and I, I think the idea is we want to be ready so we we're gonna plan everything like just make sure that the day everything kind of opens up again there won't be a day but you know as soon as as that's works again then we'll be ready to to head out and uh so, we, so we're going to do that um then we'll see maybe we do more Th this we have a lot of shows planned and booked mm -hmm. um but yeah, I, was bummed. I was gonna see you on the tour coming here in the states and that obviously isn't happening <laughs> no Not right now currently, so, anyway. no and but we're working right now to to kind of re reschedule some of that um for late last year late next year yeah. but who knows um like we have shows in February even. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see. Uh, it's then, weird, uh, but but you gotta be there. Like we gotta book it, you yeah. know, otherwise someone else will. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh last question for you. Where can everyone find you or the band online? Well, this is Uh I'm Mikkel Stane at you know, Twitter. Um check us, yeah, Dr. Quilly on Facebook, all that stuff. And uh yeah, there's yeah we got a, some cool stuff coming up. We have a new video coming up in two weeks, I think, from now that we just shot. The album's coming out on November. Then there will be a live stream concert. That's gonna be great, and we're just preparing for that right now. And it's it's great to actually play together, <laughs> <laughs> like be in a room and play music. I haven't done that in a while, so it's it's awesome, and it's gonna be great to be on the stage. Like even though no one's like no one is there in the room with us, at least we're gonna be. On stage well thank and you I very much wait. for or thank you very much for taking the time and and uh sharing my That's lunch my with me <laughs> and enjoy <laughs> the rest of your evening cheers cheers <laughs>